Time now for Truth or Fake. I'm joined by Catalina Marchand de Abreu from our Truth or Fake desk. Uh, welcome to you. Let's begin with a climate change conspiracy theory online. What have you got for us? Yes, we're going to detail the HARP conspiracy theory today. As you know, there are plenty of those online. This is a conspiracy theory on climate change where people believe that all of the natural disasters that have been occurring recently are linked to a secret climate controlling weapon used by the U.S. Army. Uh, to be clear, HARP does exist, and it's based in Alaska. It's actually a radio transmitter that can only affect a small amount of air above it. Here's an image of ARP antennas, for example, in Alaska. And this program was actually financed by the U.S. Army from 1990s up to 2014. So this is the origin of the conspiracy theory. Uh, here's an example uh, from Germany where people are using social media to spread this conspiracy theory. This Twitter user says, floods in Germany, I don't ever recall anything like this in summer in my life. Is it just me or is it weather warfare, warfare with HARP? There's another example from Brazil where uh, uh, social media users have been circulating a video for years that supposedly shows Brazilians tearing down a harp antenna. Let's take a look at the video from July. So it turns out that people were actually tearing down electrical installations in a, a Brazilian farm in November 2017. And here's the actual news story from Globo. And as you can see, the date, it's from 2017 as well. And since then, people have been spreading this conspiracy theory online. Here there's a post from Facebook. As you can see, it also says false information. Check why. And it's a post from 2017 saying people destroyed harp. Uh, antennas in Brazil. Here's an example of another YouTube post with the same video from 2017. So just to remind the audience that HARP does exist, but it can affect global climate at a larger scale. But you have to look out for those conspiracy theories online, Tom. Oh yeah, there's plenty of them. Now there's a fake video doing the rounds and it appears to show anti-health pass protesters in Italy. I'm assuming it's not what it appears to be. Indeed, more fake news on anti-health uh, pass protests in Italy. There's a video circulating where people are claiming that anti-health protesters invaded an Italian a shopping center. Uh, here's the tweet from November 5th from Belef TV. So it's alluding to BFM TV here locally. So it's definitely a hoax account. Uh, you see there's also hashtags going with it. Pfizergate, uh, Manif, 6 Novembre, Gilets Jaunes. So it, has, uh, it was actually had nothing to do with any of these situations. Uh, there's actually a news article from this uh, happening from La Repubblica where they detail what actually happened. It was actually a video from 2008. Uh, it's from football fans from Napoli that were invading Rome's main railway station, Tom. So... This was during a local soccer match in 2008. There's also this YouTube video from another angle of the incident that day in 2008. So definitely a cheap shot from someone trying to make anti-vaxxers look bad. But if people don't verify these facts, they can actually believe that this was an anti-health pass protest in Italy, Tom. Sure, it also makes people think there's a lot more momentum than there really is for the anti-vax movement. Yes. Um, now, some fake news dating back. It's not, new, it's not new, is it, fake news? Because we've got an example that goes back to 1918. What's all this about? News, uh, more than 100 years old in honor of Armistice Day. Today, we have a little fake news story, version 1918. As you can see here in this article by the History News Channel, the false World War I armistice report that fooled America. It says, four days before the actual end of World War I, a false report misled the country and set off wild celebrations. Uh, this is a historical fact. So what happened? The U.S. Embassy in Paris received a telegram on November 7th, 1918. They misunderstood a message that they received about a local ceasefire, and they understood that it was actually a total ceasefire, hence the end of the war. They then uh, spread this news to uh, local to news wires, to the United Press Agency, and it went on from there into the headline story of newspapers everywhere. Here's an example from the Washington Times where it says Germany surrenders, so Americans celebrating in Washington, celebrating the end of the war prematurely. 
Here's another example of another photo in Times Square of people celebrating the end of the war. Uh, then there's uh, these pictures as well in Times Square saying Germany surrenders and people holding up these newspaper headlines when it was actually four days premature since the end of the war armistice day was on November 11th. But this is just a little reminder that fake news existed all along and it's been happening since humans started communicating, Tom. So this is just another version of it. Okay, well, thank you very much indeed for that. Catalina Marchandia, thank you very much thank for today's you. edition of Truth or Fake.